Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Batman Arkham City video game thoughts. I suppose I will start with the ending. So basically, Talia, possibly Raish, Clayface, and Mr. Grundy are dead, I guess. And, I mean, at first I really didn't... I still don't quite understand how it was that Grundy died. It seemed like he couldn't really die, and... I mean, I get, you know, Batman... yeah, but... And I guess it's, it's that Batman is breaking his one rule. And, yeah, that, that basically makes sense. I mean, he, it is to, to save himself from the poison. Well, yeah, and, and innocents have been poisoned as well. So, yeah. I did really enjoy getting to beat a shark in the face. That was, that was a lot of fun. Now, anyway, yes, the... So, so yeah, I guess those are dead. I, at first I did not think that Clayface, Talia, and Raish would be dead, but it seemed like Batman completely destroyed the Lazarus Pits, which is really what I call BS on the, you know, the makers of this game really badly wanted to fit in a lot of locations and a lot of villains, and certainly the, the you know, Raish's plan makes sense, but the Lazarus Pits being underneath Arkham City. I'm sorry, that is just too much of a coincidence. I mean, I have not read... I, I'll admit, all I know about Raish is the... And yes, I'm, I'm careful about pronouncing it correctly, not Ross. I would not want a short Latino to come beat me up. Yes, so the... Yes, so, so the basic... I, I only know of Raish because of the, the Nolan trilogy and the a little bit of research that I did in order to fully appreciate those, so yeah. But as far as I understand, the Lazarus... The, the pits are nowhere near Gotham. They're like in some you know, far off land or something, not, yeah, so anyway, yes, the, the, you know, so, so basically Batman sacrificed Talia, Raish, and Clayface in order to ensure that the Joker would not be immortal, which makes sense, that would really be, you know, insane if he actually, yeah. Now, the... Yeah, so, so basically, with the... Yes, that, that brings me nicely into the... I don't completely understand why the Joker hadn't taken the cure when we, when we meet him. I, I get the, the trick. If, Albeit it is a little hard to believe that all that time Clayface was posing as cured Joker. But anyway, yeah. And also, I think it's a bit unfortunate for those who don't already know. I mean, if, if you didn't know Clayface, I barely know Clayface. Yeah, suddenly, you know, the Joker turns out to be someone else who, you know, can, can morph. Yeah, that's like... Raish being part of Strange's plan, that was, you know, set up somewhat. Not, not to the point where you could guess the twist, although once they were talking about, oh, we have to kill everyone in Gotham City, it was like, 
Arkham City, it was like, oh, so yeah, basically this is like, you know, this is race, you know, yeah, territory. So basically, yeah, we meet Raish and it tells us of his vision, you know, his, his outlook on the world. And yeah, that makes sense, but Clayface, I'm pretty sure it wasn't even mentioned before that point. So, and I don't think the game gave you, excuse me, a bio for him. I mean, obviously, if you got that right before fighting him, then that would be a little awkward. But still, as it is, you just, yeah. So anyway, I don't completely get why Joker didn't have time, or, yeah, why he didn't get around to taking the cure. Because the way I see it, didn't he have it even when, when Batman came to meet him? And, you know, there was a fight, including the Joker, and then you have to, like, yeah, I also, I'm not sure why, what the Joker's plan was there, because he didn't cause Batman to be knocked out. That was Protocol 10 commencing, so, yeah, was he just that certain that that's what would happen? So, yeah, it... Yeah, I, I don't really get why he hadn't taken it there, and certainly not why at the end of it he hadn't, like... Okay, let's maybe he couldn't take it there because it was in the hands of Clayface Joker, and so it was, you know, it was a matter of Clayface Joker hadn't gotten around to the regular, you know, sick Joker at that point. Okay, I'm not sure I see it, but let's say that Basically, that's because he had to keep up appearances, because if Batman knew that he was... I mean, in theory, certainly, it is a clever, you know, a clever gag that he, you know, keeps... Yeah, and, and you have the flashbacks of, of Batman realizing that, you know, the Joker with the illness, that actually was, you know, he was alive and that was the actual Joker. Yeah, let's say it was keeping up appearances, so he, Clayface Joker, couldn't return to actual Joker with a cure. Okay, so that delays it somewhat. Why couldn't he give the, you know, get the cure to the, the real Joker before, like, you know, I mean, once he has Talia as a hostage and Batman is closing in, I don't really see why, like, Harley Quinn couldn't just grab it from Clayface Joker while Clayface Joker is keeping, you know, Talia in check. You get, you know, yeah, get the cure. I, mean, I realized that she had stolen the cure from him at that point, but it's not like they couldn't have just gotten it back from her or something. So, yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't quite see how it completely worked out to that, that it didn't, that he didn't manage to take it at all before the end there. I, it is a nice little ending bit with, you know, he, if, if Joker hadn't been so aggressive in, in trying to get it from Batman, he might have been saved, because Batman tells him, you know, I would have still saved you, even after all of this, and, you know, yeah, so that's, now, yes, so, so going back to the, the plan of Hugo Strange, or should I say Rish al Ghul, because it really, it is very much this, you know, at, at first I was like, oh, well, killing every criminal kind of thing, you know, that does somewhat also make sense, as I, guess I mentioned in the review, a, a prison that is controlled by the inmates as long as they don't try to escape. Okay, that, you know, that's an, that makes sense as something a psychiatrist would do with some kind of, you know, sociological experiment or something. But then, you know, and, and then him killing them all would also be interesting as a sort of, you know, sort of saying... I mean, he, he did get it through. He, he did get the, the different, you know... Yeah, the, the, whatever, city leaders, something like that. And also, you know, once you find 
Quincy Sharp and you're, you realize that it was, you know, Strange manipulated Sharp into getting, you know, getting to be in charge of, of Arkham City. Anyway, so yeah, Strange ma making, you know, killing them all as a sort of way of saying, you know, this is how far you'll go to be safe or, you know, something like that. You know, that, that works. But then we found out, is, you know, of course, Raish is involved as well. And, yeah, it basically makes sense as, you know, him wanting to kill all the criminals in Gotham. And then, you know, you have this thing of, you know, yeah, he, he turns around to Batman and says, join me. You know, he's just killed Strange for not living up to it, and then he's, you know, asking Batman to join him when it was Batman who stopped it. And and he's like, you know, I don't give second chances. I don't know. I guess the the bit earlier where you're going through the trials of the lab, you know, yeah, going through the trials, I guess that didn't count as the first chance he gave Batman to, to join him. It just seems like... Maybe for Batman, he is giving second chances, but yeah. And like I say in the review itself, I feel like this is too quick of an escalation of, of the first, you know, where, yeah, in the first it was very much, you know, Joker has control. Batman is somewhat trapped by Joker in the asylum, and yeah, it's, it's a fun little kind of... It's not the end of the world, you might say. It's it's a bit of a personal story, and it's very much the the continued struggle between the two. And in this, just the idea that you know all all the criminals in in Goth yeah of Gotham would be wiped out just like this. It I don't know. I just it seems like too too much to go going to that too quickly. And, you know, you're going to bring up the Nolan films. I appreciate that, but that is very much this big blockbuster thing, you know. And that was kind of... That was where they started, almost, you might say. It's, it wasn't that, you know, I mean, with this being a direct sequel to Asylum, you're going to be comparing them, and in Asylum, it really didn't go anywhere near that far. At no point was, like, all of this... I mean, yeah, there's this mention of the, you know, he threatens with bombs around Gotham, but it's not very long into the game that you're told, you know, they, they found one of the bombs. It was full of... I don't remember exactly what, but some of it was marzipan, which... Oh, marzipan. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.